okay, I want to start with a limiting reactant problem just to see how can we read this problem to get us started the right way. And what, uh, what are the questions actually asking? Typically in a limiting reactant problem, first you have to get a balanced equation. Uh, then you, you're given amounts, and traditionally you have masses because that's how we weigh things in a lab. Uh, and we would say, how much product can we make? Now, one of these is going to make more than the other. One of these has the potential to make less. So our job is to find out which one of them makes less. Typically, there is a problem. Uh, we could specify either chemical. So I would say like this. You get a problem that reads this way. If I have this much of each of these chemicals, how much nitrogen monoxide can I make? Okay, so the first question is how much? To do that, we have two separate problems because we have to apply them equal or both ways. How much can the ammonia make? How much can the oxygen make? So we have two separate problems to convert over to there. So that's going to be a full dimensional analysis twice. 3.25 grams of ammonia and 3.5 grams of oxygen. And we're going to convert both of those all the way until we get grams of NO. One of them will make less, and that is how much you can make. You can only make whichever one makes less. You, you don't want to add them together, you don't want to do anything else. One of them will make less. That makes the one, whichever one makes less the limiting reactant, and it makes the other one the excess reactant. Okay, so I've worked this one out, and I know that the oxygen is actually going to make less. So the oxygen is going to be my limiting reactant and the ammonia is going to be excess. So the next question becomes, how much excess is left over? This was how much can we make of the product, and how much excess is left. Okay. So oxygen is going to run out first, and we need to know how much ammonia is going to be left. How do we do that? Well, we need to convert the oxygen to the ammonia. Okay. So what we're saying is we know all of this 3.5 is going to go away. How much of this 3.25 will it go with it? So we start out with the oxygen, 3.5 grams of oxygen. And we're going to convert that over to grams of ammonia. All right. The big break there between those problems. Now, this is going to give us an answer. This is, this is how much ammonia we need. So the question, the math actually tells us a different answer than the one that was asked. If this is my limiting reactant, this conversion will tell me how much ammonia I need. Well, we know we have 3.25 available. So if we have 3.25 ammonia available, and then we subtract how much ammonia we used, then we will get our final answer, which is how much is actually left over. So this, hopefully this gives you a framework for working through a limiting reactant problem. Um, how much product can we make? The oxygen is going to end up make less. So we can make this much oxygen. This other answer is now meaningless. But then to figure out how much ammonia is actually left over, we would have to convert the oxygen over to the ammonia subtract how much we need from what we started with to see how much is actually left over. So that's how a limiting reactant problem looks, and we're going to do these limiting reactant problems 
uh, almost throughout the year in almost every chapter. So it's really important to understand this problem. And we're going to have another recap to show you how to do this with a BCA table, because sometimes you're going to actually be forced to use that. Uh, it's, a, it's definitely a lot easier to do. But this is a general construct on how to do it. Simple problems. Uh, if you're just answering parts of these questions, it's really easy to answer them this way. Uh, more complex problems that want you to answer multiple questions all at the same time. BCA tables are really good for that one too.